The girl intended to go to bed when she heard her grandmother's voice ringing out of the window, and on drawing back the curtains found that the she didn't look anything like her grandmother. But even so, she opened the window at the other woman's urging. The result is that the next second, the grannies are not humans, but monsters that hide around the town. Every day after dark, they come out in packs to hunt humans. The next day, the town sheriff goes to deal with the scene and when he sees Frank, the father of the child, who has just returned from a night of drunkenness. He is so angry that he gives a big slap in the face and then locks the man up. No one knows where these monsters come from, only that every night they appear in human form, and then try to compel everyone to open their doors and windows. And once they succeed, they reveal their true colors. The only way to stop them is to lock the doors and windows before dark and hand the talismanic stones that have been passed down from generation to generation at the door. If there are children in the house, it is imperative that the windows must be welded shut, and as long as these points are done, there will be no way for the monster to get in. The tragedy of the little girl's family was caused by her father's carelessness and failure to listen to the advice of the bureau sheriff. Eventually led to the wife and daughter were both killed, the abdomen all hollowed out. The death is miserable. This is the town's first incident after holding out for 96 days of peace and quiet and for violating the town's rules of survival. Frank will face punishment in a tin box. After nightfall, he'll be locked in and it's up to him whether he lives or dies and the accident seems to be predestined. While the priest was leading the memorial service, an RV broke into town. It's the first time an outsider has entered in over three months. In the car was Jim's family of four, who had planned to go on vacation. When a log crossed the highway, and a flock of inexplicably appearing crows circled in the air, Jim was going to take a detour, but who knows, he drove into this creepy town. Near the end of the funeral, the sheriff instructed everyone that none of them were to greet Jim's family, and he took it upon himself to walk over and show them the way to the highway, which they could rejoin if they just kept going around it. Of course, he said this purely out of desperation, because once this town was in, there was no way to get back out. All of the people here had broken into this isolated place by various coincidences. After running around a few times, Jim's wife Elena finally realizes that something is wrong and that they have been driving in circles around the town, not believing that such a strange thing could happen. The husband tries to try again and ends up in a car accident, trying to avoid an oncoming car from the opposite direction. The RV rolls right over onto his side and falls into the woods next to it. But luckily the driver of the other car, Topi, is not seriously hurt and gets out of the car and stumbles to the town for help. At this point, the sheriff and his co-workers were laying down spike strips in the road and they had to stop Jim's car. In a few hours, it would be dark. If they didn't make a move, Jim's family was bound to lose their lives here. Upon seeing the bloody Toby, the sheriff immediately told his colleagues to take the man to the hospital, and they went together the others to go to the place of the incident to save him. In addition to the driver, there was an actor, Jet, in the car, but he wasn't hurt, just a little disoriented. Worried about him wandering off, the sheriff leaned the man against the car and then went to rescue Jim's family. Luckily, Diana and their oldest daughter, Julie, weren't hurt all that much. The two men were successfully rescued one after the other. Only the youngest son, Ethan, was in some danger, a table leg having penetrated his calf, and he was temporarily out of action. Female doctors do not know what to do. Looking at the sky is getting darker and darker. The sheriff can only let his son Alice, with Diana and his daughter back to the town. The rest of the people stay in the caravan to hide, such as the table legs out and then make plans. In fact, the sheriff did not have a plan, although the hands of the Frank family ruined stone, but never used in the caravan. In the end, could not play a role in the caravan. He did not know, now can only take a risk to try. A lady doctor, trusting this sheriff, immediately returned to the caravan and prepared to pull the table leg out of the little boy. The other group, on the other hand, ran into trouble because the sheriff and the others had left to quickly earlier to put away the nail tape in time. And Alice, who lived in a cluster house in the suburbs, had taken a different road on the way in. Plus it was dark, and they didn't even see the spike tape, and ended up with a flat tire straight away. The only thing they could do was to get out of the car and run to the group home, which was the closest shelter. Originally, they could have arrived in time, but halfway there, it started raining again. The road became muddy, and the actor fell because he was high on drugs in the car before the accident, which led to delirium and hit his head directly on a rock, and he fell unconscious on the spot. At the same time that everyone reached the group house, the monsters appeared in human form on the sidelines, and they were not in a hurry to launch an attack, but rather, they slowly pressed on, compelling the people first before making their move. The people in the house, on the other hand, were hesitant to open the door out of fear. Julie, who has no experience and is the youngest, is the first to be trapped, and just as he is about to walk into the trap, Kenny, the policeman, fires a shot. At this time, the uncle of the guardian god inside the house, also opened the door at the sound of daughter's scolding, and let everyone in. 
The monsters knew that these humans had nowhere to hide, and there was only so much they could move around. So they were not in a hurry, if they didn't catch them tonight, then they would wait for the next night. The days were long anyway, although Diana and his daughter were safe for the time being. The boss of the group house, Donner, wasn't sure about the two of them, and still had his men tie them up, waiting for everything to be made clear, before allowing the mother and daughter to move around freely. This kind of situation has actually become commonplace. Every newcomer who breaks into this place will have to have a face-to-face -face conversation, so that they can understand the environment they are currently living in. Donner didn't say, either, when he came here, except that back then he was out hunting with his sister, and while passing through the neighborhood, he was blocked by a large tree that had fallen over. The same crows were circling in the air at the time, and his sister, being a very persistent person, had to catch that prey while it was still hot, and so she had broken into the town by mistake. It was already dark and the monsters were hunting humans everywhere, but they didn't look any different from ordinary people on the surface. And the unknown sister got out of the car and tried to drive the monsters out of her way, only to be boned and skinned on the spot. Witnessing this, Donner was so scared he couldn't even move until he saw the same horrors coming up behind him. Then he regained consciousness and quickly ran to the woods and hid in the bushes, escaping with his life. To this day, the screams of his sister as she was tortured echoed in his head, and while it all sounded a bit outlandish, Donner hadn't told a single falsehood, as any of the people in the group house could testify. Anyone who came here had encountered the large tree that had fallen in the middle of the road and the crows overhead. By now the sheriff had hung up the rune stone and locked all the windows. Jim looked a little puzzled, but the sheriff didn't explain much, just told him that it was done to make the RV safer. 